Well, looking at it again through the, the lens of business, uh, the report that we commissioned and published in April highlighted the importance of currency, trade relations, tax arrangements, uh, and the ability to sustain a free market across the British Isles as being critical issues, which on the face of it, if, if Scotland were it to go its own way, would create extra cost, certainly would create uncertainty for the business community uh, as the, the separation took place. Uh, and in the long run, whilst there might be some benefits arising from an independent Scotland, it was clear that there would be substantial extra costs so that on balance the risks and costs outweighed those potential benefits. Do you feel that the debate has become more fact-based? Do you think some of the emotion has, has fallen out of it and, and we are now having a proper fact-based fact debate? I think that's a really, a really interesting question and there's... Even last week, we saw various assertions and, and, and facts coming from, from both campaigns. I think the, the challenge that we've got at the moment is that uh, the facts, frankly, are being uh, you know, used to support either argument or what are perceived to be facts are being used to support either argument. And as we saw last week, what it is frankly doing is, is creating confusion uh, what we sought to do, and, and we again saw the Institute of Fiscal Studies coming out with its report this week, is seek to come up with objective, non-partisan research that identifies the issues, identifies both the opportunities and the costs. So I'd have to say that uh, you know, I think there is still a late lot of noise in the debate generally, and I'm not sure if you were to speak to the average voter in Scotland, that, that they would say that, well, look, I've got a clear set of facts. Still lots of uncertainty around the currency, uh, around the tax arrangements. Uh, what does that mean for the starting point of an independent Scotland in terms of its tax base, in terms of its deficit position? Uh, and then longer term, what does that mean in terms of the likelihood of additional taxes or additional costs being imposed on the people of Scotland to support an independent country? versus the future opportunities. So I think in the round, I'd have to say, I'm not sure we have moved much further forward despite both sides apparently coming out with, with lots of facts. And you, you touched on the uncertainty that this is doing to the investments climate. How concerned uh, are your, your peers in the Scottish business community about this? Is this becoming a really damaging factor for Scottish GDP right now in your view? I, I, to be honest, I don't think it is a huge factor right now. It's just another issue that uh, businesses are having to think about in terms of their investment decision making. I think the really big challenge is post the 18th of September, if there is a yes vote, because at that point, frankly, uh, the, the independence outcome is unknown until the settlement negotiations are undertaken with the rest of the UK.